a big taboo about infertility, and which is insane because it's actually so common. And it's one out of seven couples. So the way IVF works is that you take a sperm, you take the ovule, you generate what on average is five embryos per couple, and you have to maintain these embryos alive in the lab for four to five days before you re-implant them in the patient. Now, at this point, there's two really interesting elements that really explain why it's really the good time to start a company like in vitro. The first one is that it used to be common for several embryos to be implanted back in the woman in the hope that at least one was gonna work. We realized that the risks of um, multiple pregnancies are too high. Well, if we're gonna implant only one embryo, how do we know which one we choose to implant? And so this is the new question in the field. One of the new developments is that they have these new microscopes where you have the oven is essentially in the microscope. It means that you don't judge the embryo based on one image, but you now have an image taken every 15 to 20 minutes for six days. So you have these huge data sets that really often today are left unexploited. But this is really where in vitro aims at starting. Really, we want to propose artificial intelligence and it's essentially a SaaS platform, a software that helps fertility clinics make the most of this data so that spend less time, but also so they can personalize this process. We really want to make sure IVF becomes a more transparent process because today one of the problems, both from the medical side but from the patient side, is that there's a lot of information to process and it's really hard to know what are your chances. It's not exactly easy, especially on, on women, because it can be quite invasive. So the idea is that by really optimizing the workflow and personalizing the decision making, we really maximize the chances of every couple to have a child in as little cycles as possible. Because to them the problem is that because the chances are not as high as maybe they could be, patients have to repeat this process and sometimes to the point where they just give up even before they actually manage to have a child. So the, I think the second vision we have is really to make sure it becomes as easy as possible.